If there's one segment of vehicle where sales have taken a huge nosedive over the years, it's minivans. I mean, Chrysler invented the segment back in 1984 with the original Dodge Caravan. So when the company uh, killed off the town and country name last year and replaced it with the Pacifica, it raised a lot of eyebrows. Well, this week they've sent me over the latest Pacifica, this one being the world's first production plug-in hybrid minivan. So is it any good in a market where everyone flocks toward crossovers? That's what we're here to find out. So when it comes to styling, minivans aren't really known for offering the sleekest design. You can see the Pacifica kind of takes the front end that we've seen on the discontinued Chrysler 200, the corporate kind of LED running lights, the grill with the chrome bar, the split wing or the winged emblem uh, that Chrysler has right now. Overall, the look kind of just looks like a bigger version of the 200. I particularly don't think it's super handsome, but again, uh, style isn't really the biggest thing when it comes to a minivan. Now, one thing that kind of annoys me about the hybrid, if you guys go for a fully loaded limited trim, you can get HID headlights as standard. The hybrid, for some reason, doesn't offer it, uh, so instead you're stuck with projector halogens, even on this top trim model. Now, looking at the wheel size of this particular one, this one has an optional 18-inch um, wheel. It's a very aerodynamic design, which is good because this is the uh, plug-in hybrid variant. It needs to be a little bit slipperier through the wind. Now, minivans are pretty big vehicles despite their mini name. Uh, and this one's around 122 inches long in the wheelbase, about 204 inches uh, overall. It's about the same size as a Honda Odyssey or a Toyota Sienna, um, but it's about also as long as like a full-size sedan, so you're gonna have to get used to driving this thing. Now, at the rear, I see a lot of crossover design language at the back, which again, Chrysler brought back the Pacifica name, which was a crossover back in 2004, and they kind of carried over with this boxy look, the taillights here. Overall, I think the car looks a little bit better from the rear, um, and really the only distinction that you're gonna get that is a hybrid is the plug-in or the e-hybrid badge that you get uh, on this particular model that with, comes with the plug-in hybrid. Now, of course, a power tailgate is included on this one. It also has the foot activated gesture control, which is important. And this is the whole reason why minivans are way more efficient uh, cr people carriers than crossovers. I mean, look how much space you have back here. This is around 32 cubic feet of space with the third row up. So you could actually carry seven people in this and all their things, which you can't do with something like a, a Toyota Highlander uh, or a Mazda CX-9 that only gives you half the space and then the folding mechanism now honda technically pioneered these fold into the floor seats but chrysler um, also did their part to make it even easier instead to do it you just literally just pull a strap and then just pull it in and then it just kind of falls into the floor and it gives you a flat load floor back here which is nice now being that the plug-in this is a plug-in hybrid model you can't get that vacuum cleaner that they offer on the gas model because it would normally go here instead chrysler puts the uh, space here where you'd put the actual charger for the level one port and then there's like another little space here where you can access the battery because the front has the batteries taken up by the electric motor system. Another thing you can't uh, get on this particular one is the stow and go seats. We'll show you guys that in the second row later on in the video. But you can see here every Pacifica model comes with uh, the level one charger that goes into that little port. And if you want to follow me over here, uh, you just come over here and you plug it in on the driver's side here, uh, which is nice. I also like how they put it in the front and then just plug it in here. Now, this is the level one port, which means uh, it's gonna take around 12 hours to charge the battery on a full charge. If you guys have the level two charger system, which you can have installed at your home, it only takes like less than two hours, which is definitely a lot nicer. So just like all the other newer Chrysler products I've shown you, the Pacifica comes with the company's new key fob. It's absolutely massive, although kind of necessary considering it gives you the ability to open all the doors, the lift gate, and activate the remote start. To do that, just double tap this button here. It will beep for you. And then because this one's the hybrid, there's obviously no starter hiccup noise. It just kind of turns itself on. Uh, and then to, if you want to shut it off, just tap it again and it will do that for you. Now, when you approach the Pacifica, you will notice a few things. First of all, obviously there's the charge door there for the electric motor. Now to lock the door, there's a button here on the handle. Just touch that, that locks the door. To unlock it, there's a sensor on the back of the handle. Just touch that and then it'll unlock all the doors for you. Now looking at the inside of this particular uh, Pacifica Hybrid, you can see it's got a pretty nice two-tone interior. Chrysler, or FCA, has been really upgrading the interior quality, and it shows. This one's a fully loaded Limited. It's got these really nice leather buckets for the uh, front front seats. They're heated and cooled. Um, the steering wheel, I actually really like the two-tone that they use here. 
with the beige and then the black and then this metal accent piece. The door panels also look pretty nice. I mean, overall, it's a really, you know, welcoming interior when you first get uh, open the door. And then when you step inside, as with other, any other van, it has a really nice, easy step in height, which is really good. It also gives you a nice commanding view of the road, just like an SUV. So again, uh, vans, you know, give you that ability to see a little bit more versus a car. Now, when you shut the door, it sounds okay. Uh, it's probably not one of the most solid sounding, solid sounding doors I've heard, but nevertheless, uh, if you want to start the vehicle up, just put your foot on the brake and then push this button here uh, to turn on all the electronics. And you can see the hybrid comes with its own specific display, which I actually really like the display. It's got a big LCD in the center. It's got two gauges uh, that are analog, uh, the fuel on the right, and then like a charge and then power meter on the left. And then you can customize uh, the center display by pushing on this button right here, uh, which gives you six different levels or you know views, whatever you want to look at your audio. And if you just don't want to look at all the stuff here, like the hybrid info, the driver assist, you can just put it on a big speedometer there, which will show you what your speed is. Now, looking at the rest of this interior, you can see here, it's typical uh, FCA stuff. The dashboard is comp composed of a soft touch injection molded plastic with some of the faux stitching. It's all nice, it fits together nicely. It's got some silver painted plastic here accenting it. The door panels are also soft touch right there. The windows are one touch automatic for just the front, not for the second row. I kind of understand why. I guess it's a van, kids are gonna be playing with that all the time. The mirrors don't electrically fold. I kind of expected that considering how wide this vehicle is, but they're power mirrors. Uh, it's nice and padded right here. You can put your cell phone right there, which is nice. A lot more storage down here, and then another uh, area right there for cups and whatnot. Um, your mirror, your window controls, I'm sorry, your headlight controls are down there along with the dimmer switch. And then looking at the steering wheel, you can see here, it's a pretty big steering wheel with a fat rim. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, it's tilt telescoping. It's a heated steering wheel as well. You have your controls here for the cruise control, the adaptive cruise, and then that changes your phone controls and then uh, updates the screen display right there. Now looking at the center stack here, this is the latest version of Chrysler's 8.4 inch Uconnect head unit. It does include Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as you guys can see. Um, that was new I believe for 2018. I don't remember if the 17s have that, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I really like FCA's system. It's a really, really easy to use head unit here. Uh, and the one thing I really like about it is just the quickness of the touch response. Now obviously I have it in CarPlay mode there. This is kind of what you know the screen looks like if you just have it in the regular mode. This is the audio display. Navigation brings up an updated map head unit here or map graphics, which certainly look nice. Uh, the, you know, it's, it's working exactly like a tablet. It has the pinch swipe zoom capability. The graphics are good. It's really quick. It's really easy to use. You have a 360 surround view camera that this particular one has, which is nice. I mean, with a big vehicle like this, it has front and rear parking sensors. It has the ability to parallel park itself if you push this button here, uh, along with some parking sensors, which is nice. One thing I really like about FCA system is when you go to the apps, you know, display here, you can basically just move around apps. Like if I wanted to move the nav, I can just click that there and then it'll just move it over there if I want to bring it out. If I can reposition that and like if I wanted to put passenger seat heat right here, I can do that and rearrange it. That's really nice. It's a, it's kind of something that they took from, you know, um, your phone where you can kind of rearrange things and it allows you to do that. Now this only, they only give you this ability when the vehicle is stationary. So don't try to, you know, readjust that from there. The hybrid electric mode here shows your display for whether you're using battery or gas engine, kind of important to do that. One thing I noticed about the, about the Pacifica hybrid, it doesn't give you the ability to just run on, you know, the gas engine alone where you can kind of hold the charge. I really hope Chrysler updates that because sometimes I don't want to use the battery power. I just want it to be using gas motor or the gas engine until you know, I'm going to actually be using the electric motor. Now, down here, you can have your tri-zone climate control, um, your volume knob, your tuning knob. This controls the eCVT transmission. Um, the rotary dial is definitely interesting. It frees up some space here. It gets rid of the column shifter and like a traditional shifter here. Although I did find that it's really close to the volume knob and there are times where I was driving where I was about to turn this and put it into neutral while I was driving. So that's something you kind of have to get used to. I think um, they've done a good job with differentiating it, but the location, it's just really close to the volume knob. To mitigate that, you can also just use the steering wheel controls here for the volume on the back of the steering wheel. FCA is very famous for doing that. Now, down here, as with any van, there's a crap ton of storage. I mean, push this button here, you can see there's for coins and you can hide stuff down there. Your DVD Blu-ray slot is in there, your CD 
slot also I believe is in here. You have a USB port. You have a USB port down there. There's like a lot of storage. Cup holders are here. You have nice storage area right there. You can hide stuff. And then over here, it has a pull-out storage area right there. This huge console. I mean, honestly, this is the reason why vans just work so well for practicality because you have all this storage capability. Now over here, the glove compartment is actually pretty small, um, but it does hold some stuff. It's damped, not lined with felt. The seats, I found them to be immensely comfortable, and that's very important with a van. Uh, the armrests here could be a little bit softer, and they don't give you the ability to kind of adjust the armrest, which is a little bit um, disappointing, but overall, I found the seats to be good. I really love the big panel sunroof that my tester has. That's a $1,600 option, totally worth it. Above here, you have all your controls here for the power lift gate, the power door switch. You can turn it off here. You have some sunroof holders right here, and then and then to keep track of the kids, just push this button here and it gives you that little convex mirror. Uh, this van does not offer what Honda offers as the cabin watch or cabin talk. Um, instead, Chrysler just makes you do it the old fashioned way. But overall, uh, the interior of the van of the Pacifica Hybrid is certainly nice. It is missing, glaringly missing, memory seats. I don't know why they don't include memory seats on the hybrid version. And then as I said before, no uh, HID headlights, which would be nice to have, especially at this price point. So the sliding doors are basically the reason why you purchased a minivan and any parent will tell you these doors literally save your ass when you guys are in a tight parking lot and you're worried about your kids slamming the car door into that car that's parked like a jerk right next to you which I mean the power sliding doors they're a must-have feature most of the Pacifica models are going to include that now the captain chair captain's chairs back here they're immensely comfortable and I hope you like them because the hybrid model does not offer the bench which means you lose the eight passenger cap capability which is fine I mean most people are probably going to configure their minivan anyways, although the eight passenger capacity is nice. Go for the gas if you want that. Now, in terms of features, I mean, there's a ton of features in here to keep your kids occupied. The most, uh, the, or at least the most useful one are gonna be these two LCD screens that flip up. They're kind of like a tablet. And the one thing that I really like about them is you have like games where you could play tic-tac-toe or solitaire with the actual passenger right next to you, which is definitely nice. It kind of keeps people engaged. You can also install an HDMI cable to stream, you know, uh, movies. You have a USB port and you also have streaming live television. Chrysler was the first to kind of do that. It's all through Sirius. You have to pay like a fee to have that, but I think that's a really cool feature, especially when you have uh, those long road trips. Now, the rest of the seats back here, or at least the comfort, the seats themselves, they feel just as good as the front seats. Um, they do have the ability to slide forward and back. You have the recline function. Uh, one thing that you do also lose with going with the hybrid is this stow and go capability. Um, before, they would offer a little you know, area here where you could flip this up and then store the seats under there. And the gas model that I showed you guys in my last review, the batteries have to go some way, so they are underneath the actual second row here. Uh, so you lose that capability. Um, you also have some other nice EDs in here like the power or the manual sunshades, which are nice. No heated rear seats in the second row, which I was a little bit surprised by. Um, but overall, I think that a lot of people are gonna, you know, look at the second row and realize this is what I need if I actually need to put people and stuff in my uh, crossover or family vehicle. So in all those SUVs, getting to the third row is often a pain. However, minivans make it pretty easy. Now you can either step through the second row access there, or you can also pull this little lever here and that allows the second row to slide forward. Now, honestly, the space is a little bit on the small side there. So I kind of probably would just go through the middle row, um, but for demonstration purposes, I'll just get through on this side here. Now, getting back here, the third row is also equally comfortable. I'm gonna sit over here on this side here. And yeah, the, the leg room here is really nice. You could easily put a full-size adult, which you can't really do in a lot of the mid-size crossovers. So again, this is one of the reasons why vans are the more superior people mover. Now, in terms of features back here, there is a nice manual sunshade, but really the most uh, intriguing aspect is the panoramic sunroof that you get on this particular one. It's a $1,500 option. You have a manual retractable sunshade here or the power one over the front seat where it actually opens. It really just lets in a lot of light. The Pacific is one of the few that offers a panel sunroof. There is one USB charge cable back here and some cup holders, which is good. But I mean, overall, I mean, this is really, there's no substitute for a vehicle that can carry this much people and stuff than a van. So under the hood of this Pacifica Hybrid, I don't go usually too much in debt with under the hood of a minivan, but this is a world first for a production van. Now, um, this is obviously uh, a V6 under the hood. This is the company's corporate 3.6 liter uh, Pentastar V6. Now it runs on the Atkinson cycle. Now Chrysler didn't have too much in terms of output numbers for the gas engine alone. They say total system output is 260 horsepower. Again, no torque figures. Now the electric motor, it's a 16 kilowatt hour electric motor. It's not terribly large, but it can travel up to 
through 33 miles on electric power alone, and then that's when the gas engine kicks in to give you like another 450 miles of range. I think the most they rated, they rated this at was like 550 miles of total range, uh, which is definitely very good. Now, fuel economy for the gas engine actually is also really good. The standard gas model gets like 22 miles per gallon combined. This one's rated at 32 miles per gallon combined, so 10 MPG better. So that's definitely a huge improvement. Part of that improvement comes to obviously the electric motors, but it also runs out through an EVT transmission, basically a CVT, replacing that not loved nine speed automatic that I drove in the gas model last year. So um, all Pacificas, they're still uh, front wheel drive, all wheel drive is not available. And with all the batteries and stuff, it's weighing about 600 pounds more. This one's just a tick under 5,000 pounds. So she's a big girl, but let's get out on the road and see how it performs, shall we? Okay, so I don't usually get excited to drive vans, but I've never driven a plug-in hybrid van. And I have to say, when uh, Chrysler first left me this van, you know, I wasn't too impressed until I saw the little plug. And we've never seen anything like a plug-in minivan. I mean, the fact that they give you 33 miles of electric-only range. And I also was intrigued with the fact that they got rid of the nine-speed auto, which nobody liked. Instead, it has a CVT. Now, the one thing I don't like about this initially first getting off the line is how sluggish it feels. <laughs> Usually with uh, electric cars, you have a ton of torque uh, when you first step on the gas. And for some reason, the Pacifica Hybrid just feels incredibly lethargic off the line. You kind of have to wait for like, I feel like you're waiting for the engine, the transmission to kind of wake up. And it's a little frustrating, especially when you're trying to, you know, get in front of somebody and whatnot. Now, when you get up to speed in the Pacifica Hybrid, that's kind of where you're feeling a lot of the, the extra torque of the electric motor. Um, it has really good passing power. You don't really have to wait, especially for, you know, the transmission to downshift, like in the gas engine only model. And honestly, when you put your foot down, this thing will accelerate, get out of its way really quick. It's just really slow off the line, um, which is a little annoying, but again, Driving the Pacifica Hybrid like the gas engine, it, it drives very similarly. And the CVT transmission, the EVT, it really is a great transmission. It's so much better than the nine-speed auto. It's much more responsive, and that's what I really like about it. Um, it just makes this van feel pretty peppy. It's just really slow off the line that annoys me. Now, the rest of the driving dynamics, it's a van, so I'm not gonna judge this too much on sporty performance. I mean, if you really want the most fun to drive van, the new Odyssey is probably gonna fit the bill, um, but nobody really cares with a van. You don't buy that for that. However, when you're driving the Pacifica Hybrid, it's really easy to drive. It has a really great view out of the road. It's got big side mirrors. Um, you can easily see where the front of the vehicle is and how you, know, you can judge it pretty well. And it's just really comfortable. You know, the seats are really comfortable. It has a really nice ride quality as well. And the handling, I mean, let's talk a little about that. It's not, it's not sporty, but it's also secure. The steering is incredibly numb, but you know, it, it's, it's fine to drive. And then when you want to pass somebody, my foot is to the floor here. It actually has really good passing power ability, so I'm, I'm in pretty shocked. Now, in terms of the noise levels in here, because there's no engine noise, you do hear some wind noise at the van. It doesn't exactly slip through the, the air, but I mean, overall, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. It's incredibly smooth. That's the one thing about this electric powertrain is it's so quiet, it's so smooth. Um, aside from wind noise, you're really just going to get in this and just fall in love with it, on, especially on those longer road trips, and the ride quality is also pretty good good in here. Now, in terms of driver assistance, the Pacifica Hybrid has basically everything This limited model. It's got the full speed range, adaptive cruise control. Um, if I set it here, it'll just follow the car to a full stop. It also has the lane sense function where it'll sense when you're going over the lane. Um, it also will, I believe, correctively steer, although it's not the best in terms of that. You can see there, it's actually kind of trying to steer even though there's not a lane. It kind of just waits until you go over and then it just shoves you back over to the lane, which is kind of what I expected but <laughs> this thing has really great torque. It's got great passing power abilities. Just don't try to smoke anybody at the light. That's where its gas counterpart feels quicker off the line, which it shouldn't, although other hybrids can feel a little bit lethargic off the line as well. But I mean, driving this is quite a pleasant experience. You know, you're just kind of have to deal with the fact that it does feel heavy, um, but it also feels really safe. You know, these type of vehicles, they're gonna be holding children, small children and whatnot, your families, and you want them to be safe. You want them to feel comfortable, um, and really the only thing about downside about buying a van is everyone's gonna be kind of looking to you to carry their kids, carry their stuff around. It's kind of important. Uh, and they're gonna be, you know, noticing that. Be like, oh, you, who has the biggest vehicle? You do. You should be the one to drive all the kids around and whatnot. <laughs> oh God, this thing is really sluggish from a stop. All right, come on. It's at floored right now. 
slowly getting up to speed. I can see it's using more of the electric motor. And then the gas engine is very subtle. You don't really hear it too much, but God, this thing, they really need to work on making it feel quicker off the line because once you get it going and I put my foot down here, it's fine. It feels really quick, honestly, just first getting off the line. Ugh. But enough about the, about the acceleration, uh, the fuel economy. Let's talk a little about that because Chrysler says this will go 33 miles on a full charge. I was able to confirm that. Um, I fully charged it and you know, it roughly gave me about 30 miles on a full charge, which is nice. Um, theoretically, if, you're, if your commute is less than 10 miles one way, you could just not use any gas when you go to work. Um, now the gas mileage, when the gas engine does kick in, that's something I haven't been able to confirm. The EPA says this gets 32 miles per gallon, which is 10 mpg better than the gas only model. And in my week's worth of testing, I've only been averaging about, let's see here, 22 if I believe, remember correctly, um, 22 miles per gallon, which again, isn't exactly, you know, amazing. It's just 23.4 miles per gallon. You know, it's still 10 less, nine less than what you're supposed to get. I imagine if you guys, you know, drive it a little bit less aggressively than I do, um, you'll probably get better gas miles than that. But I mean, you know, after spending a week with this, I don't have any kids, but you know, I was able to show this to my older sister who has a six month old. Uh, and she told me she'll never drive a van, at least not yet, because she only has one kid. But she did recognize that, you know, the amount of practicality that you get with a van is just unbeatable, especially when you, you know, look at a crossover and whatnot. It's just the styling, but again, you don't really buy a van for style. You kind of just have to accept the inevitable when you have kids, you're going to have to drive something like this. It's more practical of a vehicle, but um, in terms of the overall driving dynamics, the Pacifica Hybrid is really intriguing. And um, you also get that $7,500 tax credit if you guys buy one and you have the ability to kind of um, apply for the plates that allow you to drive in the carpool lane by yourself, which again is another intriguing proposition. So although technically I don't have kids for myself yet, I have spent a lot of time driving a lot of the competitor vans. So it's given me a good idea of where the Pacifica kind of falls into the class. Um, now after spending a week with the hybrid model, I have to say it's a pretty unique driving vehicle. The CVT that I you guys saw is a much better transmission than the nine speed auto. It has good power and the 33 miles of uh, plug-in electric only range is certainly a cool factor. It's definitely going to give buyers a reason to actually select the Pacifica hybrid because really in the segment full of three row crossovers that have that ability, really the only the Toyota Highlander hybrid kind of comes to mind. Again, it doesn't have the plug-in capability. Style-wise, it's kind of a, a whatever for me because vans, you don't really buy these for sexy styling, but in terms of practicality, uh, you really can't go wrong with this vehicle in terms of the space as you guys saw the interior and the cargo area and whatnot. So what's it gonna cost to put the Pacifica hybrid uh, in your driveway? Well, this is a pretty expensive vehicle. It starts at 39,995, which is a an eye-watering $12,000 more expensive than the cheapest Pacifica. Now, if you guys keep that, or keep in mind, um, the hybrid model is offered in three trims, um, starting at like the Touring L that starts at 39,995. If you compare it to a gas model, the difference is about $7,400. Now, keep in mind, if you guys buy a Pacific hybrid, uh, the federal government will give you a $7,500 tax credit at the end of the year, which ultimately kind of negates the price difference between this and the actual hybrid or gas model. This particular limited model starts at 44995 which is in purely only about $1,200 more than a gas model hybrid or gas model limited trim, which is perplexing to me. So really, if I was going to buy this, I would buy the fully loaded uh, limited model since it's only $1,200 more than the gas model and then take advantage of that $2,500 tax credit all in or $7,500 tax credit all in. This this one here is around $48,500 with the Pano sunroof and the upgraded 18 inch wheels. I think it's definitely expensive, although you can load up an Odyssey to be that much, uh, but overall, you know, if you guys are looking for a minivan that is just different, that's more technologically advanced, you can't really go wrong with the 2018 Pacifica Hybrid. I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 Pacifica plug-in hybrid. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.